This is a reading of my blog post, Five Reasons Why Your Therapist Sucks. The original version is available at duffthepsych.com slash badtherapy. This is meant for people that either can't read for the moment or uh, are blind. So it's a verbatim reading, and here we go. Five Reasons Why Your Therapist Sucks. I believe in therapy. It works for many people, and there is research to support this. It's my full-time job, so I better believe in it. That being said, just like any occupation, there are some therapists that suck. I want to stress that there's no one type of therapist that works 100% of the time for everyone, and the fit between the client and the therapist is super important. Regardless, there are some people who probably shouldn't be in the field, so I wanted to break down the top five reasons that certain therapists are just plain bad. Number one, they're awkward. This one is hard to define well, but you know exactly what I'm talking about. If you can't have a nice fluid conversation with someone, how can you have the confidence that they will lead you towards positive change? It seems like common sense, but I've heard way too many stories about therapists that are just interpersonally odd. It's difficult because this isn't exactly something they teach you about in graduate school. Unfortunately, if you're tenacious enough and technically do your job, you're going to get your degree and license. There's no awkwardness exam that you must take before you're allowed to work with clients. As far as I'm concerned, the bottom line is this. If you're so awkward that you make your clients uncomfortable, you might be in the wrong field. Number two, they aren't passionate. Whether they're just burnt out from years of clinical work or have their own crap going on, some shrinks seem like they're just going through the motions. In my opinion, you probably shouldn't get into a helping profession if you don't have some passion for helping people. If you think of being a therapist as a normal everyday job just to pay the bills, it definitely will come across during your sessions. Being a therapist is hard. You are certainly allowed to have your bad days, but even on your hardest days, being genuine and passionate goes a long way. They are too passive. That's number three. It's interesting. As somebody who's in the thick of their professional therapy training, I feel like I often get conflicting messages. There is some sort of inherent bias in the field of psychotherapy against being direct, assertive, or giving advice as a therapist. Sure, you want your shrink to be empathetic and listen to you well, but there's a certain balance to be had, and it personally drives me bonkers when a therapist only seems to listen and not contribute any insight. I understand that the client is really the expert on themselves, but they also came to you as an expert in psychology. It's okay to be a damn expert sometimes. Oftentimes, clients go out of their way to express gratitude to me when I'm willing to challenge them, when I give them my opinion about something, or when I assign them work to do between sessions. To them, it shows that I care and that I know what the heck I'm doing and that I'm actively trying to help. Number four, they just don't understand what you talk about. Look, I get it. There are generational differences and you can't be aware of everything going on in the world and pop culture at the same time. But just like the awkward factor, it's so hard to help someone when you have to spend half of the time trying to understand the things they talk about. I'll use my wife for an example because she says I'm allowed to. She's a wedding planner and a blogger. In therapy, she's experienced the phenomenon of her shrinks really just not getting it. They don't understand what a blog is or that it's literally her job. And as a result, she spent too much time explaining what it entails and little time feeling heard or understood. I think the solution to this is a combination of having an open personality and pushing yourself to get out there in the world and learn about new and current happenings. Number five, they share too much or too little. It's generally understood that there's a sweet spot for therapists in terms of self-disclosure. When you ask your therapist how their vacation was, you don't want them to refuse to talk about it. At the same time, you don't necessarily want to hear the intimate details about how their kid got diarrhea and ruined their trip to some museum. Or maybe you do. See, that's the thing. Everyone has a different level of self-disclosure that they enjoy from a therapist, and it's the therapist's job to understand this and work with it. Sharing too much is just TMI, and the client will begin to wonder who the session is actually for. Sharing too little makes you seem distant and not genuine. So what if I don't like my therapist? You're a consumer, and you're allowed to not like your therapist. If this is the case, you have the right to switch and try out someone else. Sometimes working through the weirdness with a therapist can be really rewarding in the end, but if it just doesn't click for one of the reasons that I went through, don't be afraid to fire them and move on to someone else that might be a better fit. So that's the article. That was five reasons why your therapist sucks. Uh, My name is Robert Duff, and that is at duffthepsych.com slash badtherapy.
And if you're interested in learning more about me, go to deathtopsych.com. Um, I also wrote a book called Hardcore Self-Help, Fuck Anxiety. So feel free to go check that out on Amazon or hardcoreselfhelp.com.